Great, yeah. So I'm delighted to present my paper, Optimal Match Recommendations in Two-Sided Marketplaces with Endogenous Prices. And this paper is uh, motivated by the context of recommendation-based platforms. And here are some examples shown. And let's look at HomeAdvisor to give you some idea. If we go to the uh, website of HomeAdvisor and type remodel a kitchen, the website asks me a bunch of questions. Uh, what uh, is my zip code? What do I want to do about the floor plan, cabinets, appliances, countertops, sinks, flooring? Uh, when do I want this to be done? More details. And at this point, once I put in my phone number and email and click the orange button, view matching pros, the platform will connect me with four providers. So all of these recommendation-based platforms work in a similar way. Customers fill out some questionnaires about what they're looking for, and the platform connects them with a limited number of suitable providers. And the research question is, for these platforms, how to best recommend matches to maximize social welfare? If I'm home advisor, I want to recommend four kitchen remodelers, which four to recommend? This goal of maximizing social welfare is motivated by the platform's desire to gain market share. Moreover, welfare maximization leads to opportunities to monetize later. The literature on optimizing match recommendations has a common theme, which is that optimal solutions are complex and intractable to compute. All of these papers study some uh, uh, model of optimal match recommendations and they prove MP harness results and the best they can do are constant factor approximation guarantees. There are other papers based on heuristics and none of these papers account for price endogeneity, which means providers set their own prices. This is important for markets like home services uh, where these contractors set their own prices outside of the platform's control. And accounting for this is important, but could potentially even make the problem more complex. The contributions of this paper is that in optimizing match recommendations, accounting for price endogeneity, allowing providers to set their own prices, actually simplifies the structure of optimal solutions so that they're tractable to compute and improves the social welfare. So having a more realistic model that uh, makes our life actually easier and improves the result. Let me now talk about the model. Uh, uh, there are two sides. On, one, on the left, we have a set I of customer segments. And on the set J, we have uh, uh, N providers. For each segment I, we have an arrival rate. So how many customers who want a uh, kitchen remodel with uh, no floor plan changes arrive per month. We have a K, which is the maximum number of recommendations for this segment. So for home advisor, for the segment of uh, people who want kitchen remodels with no uh, floor plan change, maybe K is four. There's a distribution F, which is a continuous probability measure on Rn, where N is the number of providers. For each provider J, we have a capacity, which is the maximum number of providers they can, uh, maximum number of customers they can serve on average per month. And there's an endogenous profit per job, pi J. I put it as blue because it's not a model primitive, but it is determined based on supply and demand. So in this model, uh, on the left, the customers arrive one by one. And on the right, providers stay on the platform and can serve many customers. So when the new customer of segment I arrives, she has a surplus vector alpha, which is drawn according to this distribution F. This is an n-dimensional uh, vector where the jth component denotes uh, the customer's surplus with matching with provider J. The provider's share of the surplus is the profit pi j. 
So the customer's share is alpha j minus pi j. Each customer sees a recommended set, a subset S uh, of max cardinality k, say four remodelers. And the platform uh, decides on the policy which specifies the probability of recommending each subset S to each segment I of customers. So given this set S of four kitchen remodelers, the customer is matched with the provider J such that her surplus is non-negative. And this provider is her favorite within the set S. So J is the arc max of the customer's surplus. And the platform chooses the recommendation policy X to maximize the social welfare, which is defined to be the total surplus of all the customers and all the providers. Let me make this model more concrete with an example. Suppose we have just one uh, segment of customers and four providers. The rival rate of customers is four. Uh, and K is two, meaning that we want to recommend two providers to each customer. The capacity of each provider is one in this example. And the surpluses uh, for between each customer and matching with each provider is based on the quality of the provider plus certain idiosyncratic terms. For simplicity, I make the quality equal to the index of the provider in this numerical example. And epsilon j is the uh, a customer's idiosyncratic taste with matching with provider j. And epsilon zero, you can think of it as the customer's outside option, maybe go uh, off the platform, match with someone else. And one policy of recommendation is to recommend the set four three, meaning recommend the two highest quality providers. So again, the quality is equal to the index. So provider four has quality four, provider one has quality one. What happens when we recommend always the two highest quality providers as if we're just ranking people based on quality always? So the providers who are recommended can earn a large profit because they have a lot of demand. Whereas the providers who are never recommended, they don't have a profit, they have no business. And in fact, these profits are set so that uh, uh, the induced total demand for these provider three and four is equal to their capacity of one. In other words, uh, at low prices, they may have so much interest and, and then indulgently they increase their prices until uh, the de demand is at most their supply. Now, when we look at this policy, uh, here is the customer surplus, provider surplus, as well as the social welfare. Now, at these prices, providers one and two appear to be attractive. What do I mean by that? Provider two has only one unit less quality than provider three, but her prices are much less. And so the optimal policy in this numerical example is actually to recommend all the providers. In fact, the policy uh, recommend a subset of cardinality two such that it fulfills these impression probabilities, which are the probability that each provider is recommended. These probabilities add up to two because the set S that we recommend always has cardinality two. And providers four is recommended with 65 uh, percent chance. Similarly, provider two and three, while provider one, which has quality one, is recommended five percent of the times. And this is the induced surplus uh, of customers, providers, as well as the total social welfare, which is maximal over all possible uh, ways of recommending subsets of at most two, the maximal over all policies. One question you may ask is, in specifying the optimal policy, uh, why didn't I need to specify which uh, subset is recommended at the same time? The answer is that it actually doesn't matter. Any way of recommending two providers that satisfy these impression probabilities is equally optimal. And the reason is that these are the endogenous profits and demand. And what you see is that uh, what happens under this policy 
is that the higher quality providers set a higher prices, which exactly uh, neutralizes their quality. The, provide, the quality four providers set a profit of three. The quality three providers set a profit of two. So at these prices, uh, customers are ex ante, uh, uh, sees these providers as ex ante homogenous. In other words, whenever we recommend uh, uh, two providers, each provider has equal popularity. And so this symmetry that's induced by the profits exactly offsetting the quality makes it so that it doesn't matter which two I recommend at the same time, as long as I recommend at the right frequencies. And this will be a property in general, not just in this uh, simple example. So now let me ask the question, what if the platform assumed exogenous profits? So instead of the previous, instead of the model in which profits of providers are based on supply and demand, let's say the platform assumed these providers have profit of two, for example, based on perhaps previous profits. And uh, what happens uh, is that we can write down an optimization problem and this is the optimized policy. We see it's quite complicated. It recommends the set 4.2 with probability 43%, uh, the set 3.2 with probability 55%, and so on. And this is a complex packing problem. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? So provider 4 is the highest quality, but we don't recommend provider 4 always, because if we recommend provider 4 too much, that provider will become unavailable very quickly because they're so popular. Whereas provider two gets uh, is less in quality, so we can afford to recommend provider two more since they get filled up less. So here, we want to recommend high quality providers, but we don't want to recommend them so much so that they get filled. Uh, so this is what I mean by the complex packing problem. Another question one may ask is, Okay, uh, so if providers adjust prices and the platform re-optimizes, will the market eventually converge to the optimal social welfare? In other words, even though I have the wrong model of the platform has the wrong model and assume that profits are exogenous, maybe if it keeps re-optimizes, it doesn't matter. The uh, market will converge to the optimum anyway. So let's see whether this is true. Notice that at this uh, in this policy, the demand for provider one and two are less than their capacity of one. So this puts downward pressure on their prices. And suppose they reduce their profits and then the platform re-optimizes. This is the policy. And now demand equal to capacity whenever profit is strictly positive, meaning that even though providers have the power to adjust their profits, they have no reason to. Uh, look at provider four, the higher, highest quality one. Even though provider four may be able to increase profits because the platform rations the number of recommendations to this provider four, he gets very little demand. So then he has no reason to increase profits. So in other words, the market is stuck at this strictly suboptimal equilibrium. It's a self-fulfilling equilibrium. The platform, uh, believes profits are exogenous and implements this policy and the profits actually don't change and confirms the platform's false belief. In contrast, if we consider the optimal solution under endogenous profits, we get a simpler policy that's based on these impression probabilities and the social welfare is higher. So that summarizes the main results of the paper. Let me just spend one last slide to state the formal results. Assume that surpluses follow this form where uh, it's a generalization of the pr previous numerical example. We have a gamma ij term, which is the average surplus of provider j to a segment i. And these idiosyncratic surplus and outside options can be distributed according to arbitrary segment distribution dependent distributions. It doesn't have to be the gumbo distribution, normal, uniform, anything you want. And under these assumptions, a policy X is optimal if and only if under an equilibrium profit vector, 
a set is recommended with positive probability means that those providers are among the top K with the highest gamma IJ minus pi J. So gamma IJ is the average surplus, uh, the average attractiveness of this uh, provider with this customer. And pi J accounts for the provider's prices. So you can interpret this as always recommending those with the highest predicted attractiveness, accounting for their average attractiveness and uh, accounting also for how expensive they are. Secondly, an optimal policy can be encoded simply as impression probabilities, meaning that we only care about the frequency that each provider is recommended to each segment of customers, but not which subsets are recommended at the same time. And this is due to, again, at equilibrium, these profits uh, exactly counteract these differences in gammas so that there's a lot of symmetry. Third, an optimal policy as well as the profit vector pi can be efficiently computed via stochastic subgradient descent. The paper has code that for thousands of customer segments and thousands of providers compute the optimum within minutes. So it's very efficient. And finally, if the platform had a wrong model and assumed that profit is exogenous and repeatedly re-optimizes once it sees prices change, then the market will always converge to a strictly suboptimal equilibrium. So assuming the wrong model and just keep re-optimizing it will not work. So that uh, concludes the talk. The full paper is available on SSRN and I uh, welcome any feedback and uh, comments. Okay, so thank you, Tupeng. <laughs> so we have time for a question or two. Uh, so does anyone have any questions? Okay, uh, well, I have a question, unless there's any in the chat, which I can't see. Okay, uh, so you said that it can be computed efficiently with stochastic subgradient descent. What is the like convergence rate uh, of that? Yes, yeah, so uh, I don't have, uh, I guess the paper, uh, proves convergence, but I don't optimize the convergence rate. Uh, it's, so maybe it's easier if I just explain the stochastic subgradient descent, you can see where it comes from. So in the uh, previous numerical example, uh, what happens is uh, we first greedily just assume that all the profits are zero. And then, and then let's see for each customer segment, what is their best uh, set of providers, basically ranking by gamma ij minus pi j. And it, since the pi j's are zero, it's just ranked by gamma ij. And that defines the recommendation sets. And now uh, those providers may get too much demand. And if they get too much demand, then we make, uh, we do a gradient step. So the subgradient descent is based on the profits. It's like a Tatamon process. If you have too much demand, then you increase your, uh, uh, the profit you ask for. And then you just keep reiterating uh, the magnitude that you change the profits is proportional to how much excess uh, demand you have. And this uh, Tertalman process converges quickly. And uh, uh, so there's two ways to interpret this. One, you can interpret this as the platform literally estimating these parameters and on the computer, uh, compute these pi j's using stochastic subgradient descent. Another way you can interpret this is the platform is just simply recommending those with the highest predicted attractiveness as its policy. Maybe it re-optimizes every uh, so often. And then uh, if this is the dynamic, then the market forces will be such that in equilibrium, providers will set their profits to clear their supply and demand. And this policy in the long term uh, a simple policy uh, in the long term converge to the social optimal anyway. But uh, actually uh, formalizing the, the uh, convergence rates, this is something that will be interesting that I have not done yet. Okay, I see. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so let's thank the speaker again.